Welcome back. So good to have you. This time tomorrow, Donald Trump will be president, and he will have in his possession the so-called nuclear football, that satchel containing the launch codes for and plans for nuclear war. Now we're told it can be a pretty sobering moment for an incoming president, but Trump being Trump, he apparently has taken it all in stride. In fact, he wants to show off the hardware in an interview with the Washington Post. Donald Trump said, quote, that military may come marching down Pennsylvania Avenue. That military may be flying over New York City and Washington, D.C. for parades. I mean, we're going to be showing our military. How dare you? Put a kilt on that thing. So is the man who has advocated both expanding and reducing our nuclear arsenal ready for the launch codes? Pete Hegseth is here, Fox News contributor and author of a great book on citizenship in the arena. Thank you for joining me in the arena Thank once you. again, Pete. Appreciate it. Great to have you. I will uh, see you at the inauguration tomorrow. Yes, looking Good forward to it. Uh, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Donald Trump because, mm -hmm. uh, he, as with many issues, he is given a variety of opinions, but this may be the most serious opinion that a commander in chief can hold is uh, what to do with our country's nuclear capacity. Sure, and I think he'll handle it very soberly. I mean, I, he, you, come, you can't come out of a briefing like that now in control of nuclear codes without a, the full weight of the world knowing that you have the opportunity uh, to, to unleash nuclear war uh, should you deem it necessary. And the comments he's made on the campaign trail are a reflection of saying, hey, I want to be uncertain. I don't want the enemy to know exactly what I will or will not do. And that yeah. doesn't mean I'm going to preemptively use nuclear weapons. Uh, and it also means, you know, listen, we have them for a reason, to deter them. As far, and so I think his rhetoric is, as, as always, the media uh, overhypes it and yeah. takes it literally yes. without really looking at the, what he means when he says what he says. Yeah, and it's also an incredibly lazy way uh, to do journalism. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I understand the idea that he wants to be perceived <laughs> as an unpredictable madman. And he's saying things like, you know, maybe that will be an option for us. Uh, I'm not going to show all my cards right now. Uh, he's not Kenny Rogers, though, in the middle of a poker game, and this is far more serious. And speaking of which, how does that transfer occur? How, well, w what is it like? You know, take us through the steps well, of how he learns the codes and, and gets the football. I mean, I haven't been inside it, but I read, read a good deal about it, and it happens usually the morning of the inauguration, at the, usually at the Blair House, where the president historically stays the night before. And you, it's, it's, from what I understand, very clinical. It's a military briefing. It's the details of how you decode, how you prove that you're the president, how you send those orders to, to, uh, to send uh, nuclear weapons or in, in any form, yeah. lands any part of the nuclear triad. So it's a call to the Pentagon that's decoded through what's in that nuclear football. Uh, so he, that's part of what hits you is that I now have that responsibility. It travels with me every single day. Yeah. And should I have to use it, I'm unleashing nuclear war. Yeah, George Stephanopoulos wrote in his book in 1999, A Political Education, about the, uh, the somber look he saw on then incoming President Bill Clinton's face mm -hmm. when he, uh, he obtained the exact same briefing. And he said that he never saw him more serious and somber. We'll see if uh, President-elect Trump has the same reaction now as far as the parades with nuclear <laughs> missiles down Pennsylvania Avenue. I love it. Listen, what the media does again, Come on, literally. Man. Come on. It's not going to be those nuclear North Korea, you know, elevated say, up nuclear this? rockets Pyongyang? with goose stepping. That. You know, that's not what's going to happen. I think he, this is a guy who's proud of the military. We've had eight years of apologizing and downsizing. He's yeah. saying, I want to rebuild. I want to modernize. I want to show the world that we're powerful. I want to fly jets. So, I mean, this is what people love about him. He, yeah. he, he's bombastic in his explanation. But what he really means, I want to be strong again. I want to be proud again. And hey, maybe we'll see a military parade or two. Why not? I don't have a problem with that. I say fix the VA, though. <laughs> Enough of the showboating. I feel Fair the enough. same way about this as I do about the, the women's march and the pop march and everything else. You know, save it for the policy discussions and let's make some real change. If you were VA secretary, uh, it would be... Which I'm not. I know. <laughs> but it, uh, it would have been an even greater America. Pete I'm still that. hopeful that it, it will be. Uh, so we'll see. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much, man. Thanks, Kennedy. Okay, very good.